feng shui is where I've ended up kind of teaching this energy of flow and environment and connecting it. And um, it wasn't like I woke up one day and said, oh, I'd be a feng shui expert, but it all came to me. And I truly believe that we all, all are here at the moment to awaken this wise woman within us, mm -hmm. to tap into why we're here as light workers on this planet that is absolutely insane at the moment and find the magic and find the magic and show the magic that exists. Hi, I'm Biz Kush, a life coach and therapist and your host here on the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. We're talking to women all over the world who found their way back to themselves, to their inner knowing, to their intuition, to their wisest self. We're exploring how to feel alive, authentic, engaged, and fully present in your life. Let's awaken your wise woman. Hi, and welcome back to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. I'm your host, Biz Kush, and we are winding down. This is the second to last episode of season two. So one more episode to go, and we will be taking a break for about three months. So we're approaching the end of May and new episodes will be back in September, sometime at the end of September. I'm going to be doing recording over the summer and hope to be bringing to the podcast some amazing women guests, some wise women guests. And I can't wait. I have a list of growing potential requests for new women on the podcast. So I'm really excited to see how it all shapes up this new season three that's going to be coming in September. If you want to know more about the episodes, more about how to work with me, more about me, you can find out if you sign up for my newsletter. So you go to elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up, all one word, and you can get on the list, hear about all the updates, the offers, the podcast episodes, mindfulness tips, so much good stuff. And when the new episodes are going to drop for season three, so sign up, get in touch, be on the list and in the know. Pretty exciting that between the Woman Warriors podcast and the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast, we are over 90,000 downloads and just about 170 episodes. So no, more than 170. What am I saying? 180 episodes. So that's amazing. Again, thanks to all of you for all the support and I hope that this podcast is supporting you on your wise woman journey. And again, if you want to work with me, want to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching, life coaching with me to help you better keep those promises to yourself, to help you stay in touch with you and your inner knowing and inner wisdom, reach out. All right, so on to the podcast guest this week. We have Patricia Lohan. She is a feng shui expert. And our conversation, I'll tell you more about her in a minute, but our conversation was really just so enlightening, just how she shifted her life focus and that she learned to connect with herself like never before, really tuning into how the energy flow of her environment and how to connect to it made real changes in her life. And she wants that for all of us. She wants all of us to be aligned energetically in our homes, our workspaces, and in our lives. And to me, I find it amazing that really that our physical space is energy too and how aligned we are with that, the, the physical space impacts how aligned we are in our lives and what comes to us. So 
really interesting stuff. Really didn't know that much about feng shui. And she shares with us what a feng shui assessment for your home and office might look like. And after talking to her, I rearranged my desk and put things on my desk because I have a big desk space that really resonate with me, that, that resonate and align with the work that I'm doing. And it was super, super helpful. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. Here's more about Patricia. Patricia is the creator of Powerhouse Feng Shui and the author of The Happy Home, a guide to creating a happy, healthy, wealthy life. She helps entrepreneurs make their homes and businesses magnetic to money, luck, and blessings. She shows you what they don't teach you in business school and what lies between the lines, your top secret tool for success. She has helped thousands of people across the globe embrace feng shui and creates lasting changes in their businesses, homes, and lives. Patricia has seen firsthand the power of the mind, surroundings, and inner healing, clearing and aligning everything so it works holistically. She loves entrepreneurship with 15 years of experience running and growing three successful startups of her own. Patricia has been featured in the media around the world, including the New York Times, CNN, Fox, Forbes, the New York Post, She Knows, Essence, Mind Body Green, USA Today, and the Elephant Journal. And today, Patricia is going to tell us how feng shui is like acupuncture for your home. She talks about being an energy worker for a home and helping us learn how to balance the energy within our house. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Patricia Lohan. Hi, Patricia, and welcome to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. Thank you so much. I am delighted to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you and to talk about Feng Shui, is that how you pronounce it? I don't mind how you pronounce it. Feng Shui, Feng Shui, Fun Shui. I like to always say it's kind of fun as well. Nice. Okay, excellent. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's great. I can say it however I want. But before we talk about that, I would love to hear a little bit about who you are and what inspires you in life and what got you interested in doing the work that you do. Mm -hmm. What inspires me is just life in general. And I absolutely love the title of your podcast, as I said, like Awaken Your Wise Woman and just becoming more and more awake and more and more connected to nature, to life, to the just abundance and amazingness of this world that we're living on really just excites me a lot. Um, mm. I love experimenting with energy and I've been doing that for a really long time and even just watching how when we change our own energy when we change the energy of our homes when we change environments when we shift things up how we can improve things how we can become happier how we can tap into flow how we can have a lot more magic in our lives um, my journey into all of this and my kind of awakening per se was in my late 20s. I was working in, with my family, running a business in the west of Ireland, a bar and restaurant. And I was pretty miserable. I was drinking a lot of alcohol most days or most week every weekend which would have been long weekends as well and I just knew that there was something off but I wasn't really able to put my finger on it so like I quit my relationship I quit my home that I was living in and moved so I kind of tried I was searching for change, but I was doing it in the wrong ways. I turned my hair blonde 
I went mm. from like a dark brunette to blonde. Wow. I did loads of dieting. I did loads of, I got, got off alcohol. I, you know, I did all these kind of extreme things. And they didn't really make me any happier. But what really unfolded was this magic of the most amazing people started to come into my life, hmm. including my first life coach, my first yoga teacher, my first kind of like energy worker, the people that introduced uh, a lady who introduced me to meditation. So I was part of a meditation circle. All these people started to kind of just landing in front of me as customers <laughs> in the place I was working. Oh, and some wow. of them had been around for a long time, like floating in as customers. And I got to know them a little bit more. And then occasionally what would pop out, this is something that's happened a lot in my life, is that something would pop out that I hadn't been thinking. You know, it'd be like, so when's your next yoga class? Hmm. Can I come to that meditation thing? Right. Maybe I'll book a session with you. And honestly, I would never even have contemplated it. And then I'm like sitting in front of the life coach, bawling my eyes out. <laughs> or and, and she's asking me this, you know, pretty simple question, like, what do you want? And mm. I couldn't answer her. I couldn't tell her. So it was a very strange time in my life. And then in the middle of all of that, my parents went on a trip to visit my sister in Australia. And they came back, they were gone for ages, like six weeks, you know, Ireland, Australia, they weren't going to go for like a week, we're going to go for a big stint, which made left me with like all this extra responsibility of like everything that they had going on, it was all on me. Hmm. And they came back. And I remember my mom looking over at me one day, and the ladies who have their tea every morning in the in the bar would say to her like oh it must be so sad leaving your daughter in Australia was it sad leaving her mom was like yeah it was sad but she's so happy she's mm -hmm. so happy and she kind of looked over at me and I was like I don't know we nobody could see me but I'm wearing a very sparkly jacket <laughs> and I have a very flowery skirt on and I currently I usually wear pink <laughs> bright colors yeah yeah she saw me wearing black head to toe and she was like, one is really happy in Australia, but this one in front of me isn't. And she wow. said, I think she later on that evening, she's like, I think you need to leave. And there it popped again. I'm going to India to become a yoga teacher. Really? I quit everything. Wow. I rode off my car. I gave away all my, I think it was like 35 pairs of shoes, everything with just all I was left was a rucksack and a ticket around the world. I used the ticket to get me to India and I didn't go any further. And I ended up just on, an, on a magical journey when I just let go of all the stuff, all of the, I don't know, the, how would you describe it? It was like all the, the ties that I thought I was bound to back the things that, you know, I couldn't answer the what I wanted for me but I could tell you what my mother my father my sister my friends all expected and wanted from me and when yeah. I got rid of all of that and um, I connected to a sense of me that I'd never done before and to a sense of freedom that I'd never experienced and that really opened the floodgates to you know real amazing spiritual work but also to the most mystical experiences when I was in India because I had no plan and I was guided every single day. Wow. And feng shui is where I've ended up kind of teaching this energy of flow and environment and connecting it. And um, it wasn't like I woke up one day and said, oh, I'd be a feng shui expert, but it all came to me. And I truly believe that we all, all are here at the moment to awaken this wise woman within us, mm -hmm. to tap into why we're here as light workers on this planet that is absolutely insane at the moment and find the magic and find the magic and show the magic that exists. And the journey with the feng shui has been truly the most inspiring and kind of profoundly transformative practice that I have used and now teach because 
we are definitely conscious and aware of the fact that we have to look after our own health now, our own nourish ourselves, nourish our mind, nourish our bodies, spend time in nature. Like, I don't think that this is new news to any ones who's listening to the podcast. True. But yeah. are we realizing when people don't realize that the physical home, the environment that we're spending some of the times 24 hours a day and a lot of people we spent 365 days of the year for the last two years inside of it has its own energetic imprint Mm -hmm. and it is fundamentally like impacting what is going on in your life your finances your relationships your health your career your your family relationships like absolutely every part of your life is being affected by the energy of your home. And this all kind of came in a full circle for me because I ended up working, teaching yoga, doing one-to-one clients, work with people for holistic therapies. Like I trained in kinesiology, Reiki, crystals, like you name it. I have like Mary Poppins bag of all of the the tools, (laughs) tools. Mm -hmm. which was it are amazing and they're so fun and they're amazing for raising your own personal energy mm-hmm. but doing that alone and then coming back to a house that's bad for people like we may as well be trying to roll a huge big boulder up a hill because yeah. we need our physical environment to support us as we raise our energy we need it to raise and change its vibration mm. so I ended up with all these clients in front of me and working with them one-to-one and being like, tell me about your bedroom. What's going on with your kitchen? And they are looking at me like, what does this have to do with what happened to me when I was nine? (laughs) (laughs) Or whatever we've been working on on this certain day. Uh And and I was like, there's something with your home. There's something going on. And, And that's just kind of the natural intuitive side, like feng shui is a very practical, very tangible, very, as I remember explaining to my accountant at the time, you know, we run numbers on your house based on the year it's built. And she actually kind of went, oh, you run numbers? And I'm like, yes, we do. All these energies, are we actually use numbers for them? That's funny. And it was really like, oh, okay. So mm. with the feng shui, I actually got books about it when I was 16. So I, I wow. knew about this practice. I'd implemented it like whatever way I could as a teenager. It was kind of all gung ho. And then like forgot about it, like just got into the followed everybody else. And, and then when it, all of this started happening and I ended up back in, in Dublin, a new city, moving to a new apartment, I said to my new flatmate, I said, I'm not leaving here until I meet my husband. I'm moving in with him. And she rolled around laughing her head off at me. She (laughs) said, this one is crazy. And I'm like, just watch me. And I was back in in Galway, my hometown, and I found the feng shui books. And I started feng shui in my bedroom, feng shui what I could of the apartment. And very soon after I met my now husband, and that was the kind of first of the magical manifestations because then it became me and Ken everyone was like how do you meet him then we feng shui our house and you know when the students ready the teacher appears I had the books I'd done it for me I was just like curious I was like there's something and then when we feng shui our home here we had some like really significant windfalls of money and this was everyone's seen a huge shift in basically what was going on in my life from me, you know, cycling around Dublin with singing bowls and teaching yoga classes for five euros to I have a new car and I'm living in a million dollar home. And we <laughs> and people are like, what? Did you just what do? is going on? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, this feng shui. And they're like, oh, give me a bit, give me some of that. So we ended up, Ken and I both uh, trained in feng shui together and he had feng shui to his house for low. We feng shui this house for low. Wow. So it was just like, I just truly believe as, as Ken said it the other day, we were just on holidays in Mexico and we had several very mystical, amazing experiences. And we were talking about like the hand that guides us. You know, sometimes we say like universe or spirit or God or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. 
I really was just like, I was like the, the hand that helps us, you know, it's like this hand, that's like this helping hand. And I just feel like that hand is always working and bringing us and presenting us with what it is that what's going to support us for our highest good. Yeah. And I truly believe, you know, as a 16 year old being nudged about feng shui, that was like a huge one, but it took me a while to get back to it. <laughs> but well, now yeah, I got back I was, to it and I'm like a hundred percent, 120 percent it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's interesting how those early interests can come full circle, come back to you Mm -hmm. when you are in a space to receive it. Like, I feel like just listening to you talking about reconnecting with yourself and then, Mm -hmm. well, the people were coming into your life, but just reconnecting with yourself so that you could receive the mm-hmm. teaching, be open to moving or going to India, things like that. Like that, it just really, that resonates with me so much. I feel like for so long, I was sort of looking for outside, like maybe mm-hmm. this religion, maybe this class that I take, maybe this certification I get, maybe, I don't know, is going to fix whatever it is that doesn't feel right inside. Yes, And it was really just finding my center, which is what needed Mm -hmm. to happen. Totally. And this is a huge part for me is this like finding your center. And what I've witnessed with the feng shui is that as the women who, who embrace it in my community, they start to reconnect with those parts. You know, I said it it impacts every part of your life. So Mm. we're, in the world that we're in right now, there's been such a huge focus on like the doing and the busyness and comparisonizes with everybody. And we haven't like actually set back and really went, well, the, that same question. And I say it to the women like over and over in my community, ladies, and I'm like, what do you want for this part of your life? And to look at every aspect, mm-hmm. not outward expectations, what would feel good for you? And it's changing the focus from out to in to like sitting with what would I like? And that really has had a, such a dramatic change because when we change the energy of the house and then we're changing our attention as well. So it's this combination of, oh, I want to do like, go, go, go faster, more, bigger. And then it's no, 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 slow down take your time. We want things to move at our optimum pace and go inwards, connect with our intentions and then do the outward action. Mm. Because when we do the racing and the fast way, it's, it's just going to, it's not going to flow in the way that you want it to, or the way that you even try and expect it to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just that whole sense of, to me, that sort of racing, doing energy, can be so frantic and Mm. scattered in many ways versus, I don't know, being more energetically aligned and tuning in to like, what is it that I like or what is it that I need or want? Yeah, for sure. I know the term feng shui and I know in my head, okay, Mm -hmm. it means like, okay, when you build your house, it has to face a certain direction and things have to be in a certain place. Beyond that, I don't know anything about it i'll have to say i don't know any of this so that's okay yeah but i would love to know more (laughs) yes i would love to hear more about it and get a better sense for i honestly do believe that feng shui is probably one of the there's just like the one that has the most misconceptions and the kind of really one that that has attached some really weird things to it Mm -hmm. (laughs) that are sometimes wrong and sometimes just like misunderstood Mm -hmm. and honestly that's exactly what I thought it was as well when I first started and anyone who's listening you know you may be like she's going to tell me that I need to move house or put my couch in this certain place knock all the walls down your house or you think I've heard that having the toilet in this place is bad feng shui and now I know my house is bad feng shui. Mm. And I'm like, you might have heard that. And I don't really care where your toilet is. <laughs> it may not be ideal, but is this the house you're living in right now? Yeah. So there's like 
thousands of like other things that we can do. Yeah. And a lot of the time, what I've seen is, or I don't have experienced is like read an article and the article says this is bad feng shui. And then all of a sudden you're, you've written your entire house off. Right. Like that's it. I have bad feng shui. I can't do anything. And I'm like, no, 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 no. There's, every house is basically like oozing with potential. Like every house is oozing with potential. Mm. Every house actually there's no perfect feng shui house. That makes sense. Even my house is not perfect <laughs> feng shui. And I do my best. Like, honestly, I do my very best. And the other thing around feng shui is that it's not about interior design. Perfect, beautiful, magazine, perfect houses. Sometimes I've feng shui them. Many times I have. And they've had terrible feng shui and they might look really pretty and fancy, but they actually could be terrible. Yeah. So it's not about that. And this is something, you know, for someone who might be living in a house that they've been in for a really long time, they're like, well, I need a new bathroom. That must be terrible feng shui because my bathroom is really old or my kitchen is like, or the carpet looks terrible. Mm. If the carpet looks terrible, I'm going to give you a solution for this. Or you want to get new carpet rather than looking at the carpet that looks terrible, go to the carpet shop and start to pick new carpet, even if you don't have the money for it, because you're going to change energy around it. You're like, oh, this is the new carpet that's going to be there and putting it there and getting excited about the new thing as opposed to like this carpet or go, you know, what new floors am I going to have and start envisioning it. Your house is listening. So it wants you to hear, it wants to hear encouraging vibes and like, oh, how, how am I going to get upgraded? And then next, just kind of like on a kind of precursors of feng shui, feng shui isn't about decluttering. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and. I know, but oftentimes what comes as a result of feng shui is that people get really excited about decluttering yeah. because they get more connected to the energy of their house. The vibration and energy of your house starts to increase. So then you don't want clutter because it goes away. It's like low vibe, like, you know. Yeah. It helps you sort of release the sort of holding. Or it just helps you, exactly. Um, and for anyone who's out there who is not a naturally tidy person, or worries about the clothes that are on the bed or on the chair in the bedroom from yesterday or the laundry cupboard that's a bit messy or the dishes on the side of the ta- on the sideboard. Mm. That's called life. Right. <laughs> it's not bad feng shui. Right. So just to kind of qualify this in so many different aspects, I like to see feng shui as acupuncture for your home. Hmm. So just like an acupuncturist, She's not going to give you, I don't give interior design advice. She's not going to give you fashion advice. I can <laughs> tell you what to wear, which, and she may give some recommendations about nutrition and all different things, but ultimately her his or her job is to get the energy of your home aligned. So I'm like an energy worker for a home and houses have very dense energy. Mm-hmm. Feng Shui is 5,000 years old and way back when houses were built from a place of real intention. So when this first originated, even just the actual people that they probably didn't even use consultants back there. They back then, like 5,000 years ago, Mm -hmm. they stood on the land and they had a knowledge of where the winds came from to protect them, where the storms came or how to have some mountain or some hills around them. So they felt supported not be right beside the sea, like on the water's edge because of a storm water coming on them or by a river because it could flood. You know, it was very logical placement of land, a placement of homes. And they would look at maybe the, how the sun was rising and setting for optimum. So it was like optimizing the location of the house. Mm-hmm. Now, only a few people get a chance to do that. Like now to work with me to say, oh, I've got this plot of land in this room, but my house, where's the best place? And that's a really fun project to work on. And I've worked on many of them. We still don't get perfect houses. (laughs) We still have to work it out and do the best we can. Yeah. But from the 99% of the people that are probably listening and um, who I work with, we're just working with the house that you are currently living in. And most people are feeling a bit stagnant, a bit stuck. Like, why do you go to an acupuncturist? Because 
things are just not moving, flowing in your body. Things are just not, you're not flowing. It's the same thing with a house. Mm -hmm. It's essentially things are just not moving in the way that you want. And you've been doing the work. So not like most of the women have been doing like internal work, which are boards, clearing, setting intentions, energy work, all of that fabulous work, all that fabulous, fabulous, raising your own energy and vibration, changing your mindset and beliefs. And that is on a personal level, but your home hasn't changed. So if we even really go down to the nuts and bolts of it, like just the law of attraction, you just go, whatever your beliefs are, whatever has been going on in your life. And then you get a new hat, you get your house and then it's, it's a match. (laughs) So basically it is literally a mirror for what they like pretty much the unconscious so if you have like not a great money mindset you may up, end up with a house that hasn't got great financial like prospects mm. or at like a financial stability or energy or if you have relationship things about relationships or family whatever it can often mirror back and it's really I don't mean in, not in a sadistic mean way but I always kind of like oh wow that's crazy like this person, you know, I recently had a, a client who's looking to buy a new house and she's recently divorced. She's divorcing. She wants a new house. She wants it to be supportive for this, this, this. And like the house was like bad for relationships, not good for children. Like it was just like at this new house, wow. one that she picked. I was like, no, 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 stay away. <laughs> we need you to be in a house that has, that is really supportive for all the things, not what you've just come out of. Like literally the house she had picked was like exactly the same energy of what she, what she was meant. I was like, Oh no, 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 we need to change this. So, um, and then I'm relieved because I'm like, no, Stuart, we'll find you one that will suit. Now that kind of sounds a little bit like difficult to kind of connect with but when we work with feng shui we're working with the five elements so it's very closely associated to as i said acupuncture which is from chinese medicine which then really ultimately is the dao Mm. and the dao at work is about flow it's about tapping into universal source energy it's about everything working out and going smoothly and being in this trusting surrendered space And that's ultimately what happens when we start working with the feng shui in our homes is that not only do we raise our own energy, but then we start changing the frequency and energy of our house. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, then it supports all the amazing work that we've been doing in our career or in our relationships or for ourselves, our Mm self-care. So I see clients lose weight, have financial windfalls, get like the kind of recognition that they deserve from their career, whether winning awards or, Mm -hmm. you know, getting um, new clients, whatever. It, It just kind of, it's like, oh, we've seen what you've been doing, but the house hasn't been supporting that because it's just not there. And when it starts to do that, it's like, oh, wow, like take off. And it really can see this kind of flow starts to unfold and kind of like unblocks things, which is what the acupuncturist does. So it's essentially that. And I hope that makes more sense for you about feng shui. It does. It does. It's like all the... Yeah, the energy of your house, if it's not aligned with where you are internally, all the work that you're doing isn't necessarily going to give you what you need in a fuller sense. And that Mm -hmm. when you can bring your home more into alignment, then all of it flows together, like your energy as well as the house's energy. and, And it doesn't have to be perfect, which is nice to hear. And so you said it's the five elements when you're going into a client's home, for instance, or even your own home, like, what are you looking for? What is it that you're looking for to, how do you know if something's out of alignment? Ah, this is fun. So we actually, um, we do all of our consultations online. We work online totally. And I don't see people's houses. Hmm. And they send us photos. We see the exterior and then our the interior and layout. Well, we look at the plan of the house and the exterior photos, but the internal, we then just give reflections back in our group to people. So they'll post a photo of a bedroom and we're like, mm, tweak, tweak, tweak these things. But what you said is so interesting. What are you looking for? What, do, what are you seeing? Mm-hmm. And this is thing 
we're not like looking at your house. We're not looking at the inside. What we're doing is we're actually analyzing the energy of the house based on when it was built, based on the location of it on the earth. So like with the compass, so technology has just been like the biggest blessing for feng shui now. Hmm. So we can do absolutely everything virtually and we analyze from the external, the year it's built, the size of it, the shape of it. So we're looking at all of these different things and that will then we'll analyze it and be like and then see what's actually going on energetically from that level hmm. so that's kind of our and that's really for people they're like what you don't come in and look around my house and tell me what to move <laughs> and I'm like I do but that's like the tip of the iceberg that's kind of actually when I work with my clients one-to-one hmm. the first thing I do is I do all of that that work and I'm like okay here's your report this is what you need to put in okay. so these are the needle points essentially like the acupuncturist needle points so we do this analysis and we're like these are the needle points that need to go in to balance the energy and that's bespoke for every single house so it's not like a cookie cutter approach it's very specific and then after that then i'll say okay i know you desperately want to move things and change things around <laughs> so here's what you can do so that's kind of as i said it's like the, the um that's all below the the iceberg so the tip of the iceberg is the things i can share here for you to look at it so when i do go to a client's house and once they've implemented the cures per se which could be anything like it could be a plant it could be a salt lamp it could be something red it could be like the five elements it could be some crystals but it's it's bespoke and specific to their home and to the different areas mm. but once they've done that then I'm like okay well let's start at your front door let's start at the exterior of your house and make sure that it's easy to find like if I'm especially if I when I used to be doing consultations in person years ago I'd be like is it easy to find it like is there a sign is it easy to get to? Is it well lit? And then coming in, does it feel welcoming? Does it feel happy? Hmm. I always remember going to a client's house and pulling up in the driveway. And as I pulled up at the driveway, I got out of the car at the front door and the front door was all, the paint was all chipping. The welcome sign was broken hmm. and all the plants were dead. And it was all like cobwebs. Yeah, And I was like, okay, hey, this is, not great and the conversation I've been having with the client before I came was that she's like oh, this house is, feels like a hospital so she had like a special needs mm. son and what had happened was they didn't they'd stopped using their front entrance completely which is the mouth of the house it's where all the energy comes in so there was no energy coming in it was just yeah. and that also was their prosperity area it was which is not really that relevant, but there's still no chi. There was no energy moving. And um, so they was coming in and they were using was you walked straight in, you came around the back of the house and you came in a little back door and it was just like medical, medical equipment. It was just the storage area for medical equipment. And I'm like, it does feel like a hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm walking into. That's the first thing you saw when you walked in. So after that, like I'd gone back and after that, it was just like they had it. They used to have a like it was a beautiful house. So it was like when I brought her around and I was like, look at this, you know, it's the house is totally neglected. There's no energy. And I know that you have things going on, but there's no energy coming in. We need to get people using this front doors, whoever it is to get the doorbell working. You need to make the house feel inviting and welcoming. And it just like changed so much so quickly because her mindset about it being like a hospital changed to oh, I'm coming into my beautiful hallway, which was beautiful, this gorgeous landing and really expansive and bright. So all of those little things, the difference. And then the front door is, as I said, the mouth of the house. And that's where if the front door is like blocked or hard to get in, it can represent a struggle or it can just represent like energy, money, things hard to get in. So it's really about creating more from the exterior first. And the kind of exercise I love to recommend is just fresh eyes. So moving around your home with a set of fresh eyes, like pretending that you have new eyes and you're looking at the space for the first time, like you're a new person. And when you walk in, how does 
it make you feel for so long. And what's really important is that our house is a reflection or a mirror of us, of our conscious and our unconscious. So there's so many things in our home that we have unconsciously have in our home that could be sabotaging us. <laughs> like, our, you know, we have these unconscious beliefs that block us, same as our mm. house. So those little friction points of the door or handles like the kitchen, you know, the kitchen, any door handle or handles at all, that's a grip on life a grip on finances. I always just laugh like because over at my mother-in-law's, she does not have any handles on any of her kitchen cupboards. They've all fallen off or broken. You have to kind of go really awkward to open them. <laughs> it's not my job. <laughs> like, like, it's not even I don't give advice. It's just like, it's not right, my right, place. Right. <laughs> not the but but I'm yeah. like, it's not the place to do it. But I'm just sorry. It's so interesting because I'm like, look what's going on you know just watching and being like grip on life grip on finances all of those things that you're like there isn't and you know sometimes there's things in our homes that we just we don't like think that much about like we don't realize and this is same for me like we've been in this house now for eight years and I've been here for eight years but just today I had a conversation with my mom, because when we first moved, when I first moved in, there was no furniture. Ken had built the house, concrete floors. Mm. We couldn't afford anything, really. So I'd had some furniture in my back in our back in my hometown. And mom set it up. And also she sent like an old cabinet that was an antique cabinet that they had. Also the piano, like a few things. And the cabinet last year, I was like, oh, I need to do something with. So I painted it like green, like really cool and funky. But then the other day I said to Ken, I was like, it's just got to go. And I have not like, honestly, the hand, one of the handles are broken on it. It's really rickety. The door is never properly closed. And there's like a big kind of crack down the side of it. Like it's really old antique piece. And I was like, also this piece of furniture was bought from that, this crazy house that we had lived in. So when I was 16, when I got that feng shui book, we had moved from a tiny small house and upgraded to this really posh area and this beautiful old house. And that piece of furniture was bought for that house. And it was like, not a good feng shui house. It was a pretty tricky house to live in on so many levels. But I was like, that, that, that comes from there. And I just kind of went, oh, I hadn't Interesting. thought, you know, I, I yeah. you know, there's always more. So this is like the exercise for you to just go around your house with fresh eyes and see it doesn't mean you should throw everything out like it's not like that it's just kind of looking like how does this make me feel does it excite me is this house like a shrine to my you know is it a shrine to my past or is it I like to say is it like a kind of a a celebration of my Mm -hmm. future you could make your home like a vision board for your future, like things that you want to create and call in and have more of and to remind you of uplifting yourself as opposed to sad things or things that didn't work yeah. out. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting here in my office and I'm just looking at a picture that I have on the wall and I just love it. And I used to always be recommending <laughs> it to people for their office because I was like, you know, it's like a field of bluebells with the sun mm. coming in, big trees. Uh, it's a, a forest. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. The reason I I mentioned this to someone one day was uh, she had a picture on her wall when I was analyzing her office and her office had great feng shui, like really good. I was like, this looks great. Like maybe some brighter lights. Just she had all the kind of good, good feng shui set up. And I was like, tell me about the picture. And so we looked over at the picture on the wall and it was like a winter scene. So the the leaves were empty and it was quite cold and a bit dark and Mm -hmm. grim. Like winter is not really the season you want to be thinking about for your business. Like you want to be in hibernation, right? Nothing flourishing or growing. Like it's all inwards. Like maybe for like your meditation room, you know, if you want to go inside. And then I was like, "Tell me more about it." And she said, "That was my (laughs) ex-husband's." Oh my god! So you have a picture that of something that didn't work up from someone from a relationship that didn't work out in your office. Like that's 
the unconscious at work there you know it's just really and then she went oh yeah and we just don't realize no it's true I was gonna say it got me thinking about my office and I have like a stack of books that I can see that I have not read (laughs) it's like this reminder of the things I should be doing or whatever I don't know I think I'm gonna clean out my bookcase and put in the books that I love instead (laughs) Yes. And we've done that with clients. I like, I had a a client who she was like a Tony Robbins coach and in her office, literally all there was, was cookery books. Oh, wow. And I was like, where's all of your personal (laughs) development books? You haven't got a a Tony book in here. Like, where where are they? And um, she used to be a Cordon Bleu chef. uh, And these were all her books from then. And I'm like, well, that's an old business, an old career. Are you going to go back to that? No way. Hmm. So I was like, okay, well, maybe you might use the books in the kitchen or not. Maybe you won't need right. them. It was like her her office, like she's still one foot in the yeah. past, holding on to all of these books as opposed to like where's your Tony books. So we moved her desk around, got her with supporting wall behind her. She could see the door. And we also got all her, she got her books in and um. Yeah, she messaged me like a few days later. She's like, Patricia, oh my God, I'm getting all these new client requests. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because now you're looking at what you're doing and you're like telling the space, you're telling the environment, you're telling the universe, like, I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm not doing that because I'm anymore. Yeah, funny. Yeah, all right. Well, I have a bag of books that I do actually read because I carry them around with me. I'm going to put them on my bookshelf because that's the work I'm doing. But anyway. Patricia, this, I feel like we could probably talk for another 45 minutes and dive even (laughs) deeper, but I want to be mindful of your time and mine. And I just want to say that this has been really enlightening for me, one, learning more about it, but also just the idea of thinking about walking through your home, your working space, the living space with this sense of fresh eyes and n- not in terms of decluttering, but yeah, just what is the energy? What am I feeling? Yeah. How does it feel to walk into my home as if I had never been there before? Totally. And then it's just recognizing that there is more potential I think this is one of the things that we just don't realize is that like we're just like our toes are on it and our root it's over our head and it's all around us and it's like I want to help you (laughs) and it can it can really really be one of the most supportive tools for growth and alignment and helping us like awaken so yeah it's such an amazing practice very cool very cool so how would If there were listeners that were like, I need to know more, or I want to work with Patricia, how do they find you? Yeah, so you can come to patricialowen.com and at patricialowen.com, I have so many resources. So you're going to be like, oh, she didn't tell me this stuff. I was like, there's resources around feng shui in your office, around feng shui in your your finances, like financial. Mm -hmm. We also have like a kind of feng shui checklist. Um, and I do a weekly YouTube video. So I've done a, one on probably every theme you could possibly imagine. Cool. So come over, sign up to get that. And I just love sharing more about this. And I did create a new feng shui mini course. So if you sign up for any of those resources, I've created the feng shui mini course, a free one that basically walks around my own house. Oh, cool. <laughs> It shows you the best practices, um, but also some of the things you can't change and how we how I worked with it and little tweaks and things to do as well. So mm. come sign up and get that because that was really fun to create. And also if you like I don't know, MTV Cribs or one of those pop the scenes <laughs> jobs, it's like a cribs of my house. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing your time and your energy here on the podcast. It was really great to connect with you. Thank you so much. And yeah, looking forward to connecting with everybody and um, feel free to come onto my onto the site and then follow me on Instagram. Tell me you heard me here. I'd love to hear if you have any aha moments. 
that's like the fun thing, you know, oh. like I just walked in and I realized I had this picture. Of this. Oh, I do. So I'm fun. like already like my head is going like tick, 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 the things that I can sort of move or shift or add. And that's kind mm-hmm. of exciting because we always, Brilliant. I mean, yeah, I want to feel like I love my house and love being in it. And I want it to be happy too. Exactly. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Thank you so much. That was a really, really great conversation. As I said at the beginning, I know so little about feng shui, but it made me want to know more. And it also, as I said, as we were talking, I was mentally sort of walking through my home from the front door, but also sitting in my office and what I see as I'm sitting here. And It's interesting because so much of my beginning work with therapy was focused on mindfulness and meditation. And while I am still wholeheartedly bringing those into my life and encouraging others to do that as well, my focus is now more about parts work and internal family systems work and really learning how to... hmm, awaken and be with, with compassion and caring all of our parts, all of our parts. And that is not reflected in my office right now. That's not what I'm seeing. And so I'm kind of excited to shift the books that I look at and really embrace this new part of my journey in my own coaching and therapy work, but also aligning that here in my office but I'm also thinking about my home as well. Like, what am I seeing when I walk in the front door? What do others see? And I think they mostly see dog toys and blankets on furniture to protect from the dog because I don't want my furniture ruined. But I think there are things that can shift there too. One of the real high points, sort of aha moments in this conversation for me was when Patricia said that our house reflects the conscious and the unconscious. So what we want to put forth, but also what we don't realize we're putting forth or the energy that we're bringing in those unconscious, either old patterns or old things, old beliefs in our lives that show up in different ways. So I'm going to be mindful of that and recognize the parts of me that are hanging on to things that maybe... I can let go of. Maybe I can shift and not hold on to that really aren't mine anymore. I'd love to know what came through for you. So if you took away something from this conversation, I would love for you to tag me in a post or comment on the post with this interview in social media on Instagram at Awaken Your Wise Woman. Also Facebook for the same name. On Twitter, I'm at Woman Warriors. So follow me there, comment on the episode. Let me know your thoughts about feng shui and what came through for you during this interview. You can also sign up for my newsletter, which is out now. You can sign up through my website, elizabethcushcoaching.com and get all the insights and updates from me, as well as the latest podcast episodes delivered directly to your mailbox. Well, I hope you have a terrific week and this is the end of the season for the podcast. So listen to old episodes. If you haven't heard them, follow us on social media, sign up for the newsletter to keep posted about when the next round, the next season will be coming out because we're going to have more amazing women in the next season. And I'm super excited about the guests that are coming up. So keep following us, keep commenting, keep in touch. I look forward to connecting with you next time. Thanks for listening to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music by Andy Cush, sound editing by Laura Disler, and show notes by Kathy Cush. 
If you'd like more information about me, BizCush, and the resources shared today, go to awakenyourwisewoman.com.